Hello everyone. We just want to make a short update uh, on the video that we just done uh, that was titled uh, Grinding Aluminum uh, using the uh, Fisher 977 method. And in the video we showed how the wheel was loading on that uh, porous wheel, the very first wheel, which is right here. Uh, one thing I forgot to do was show the loading and what was taking place on the second wheel. And today Adam and I uh, we're out here and we're uh, filming uh, the video on the differential screw that we're going to be playing with. And uh, I knew I was going to have to do some surface grinder and when I pulled the wheel off I thought, oh, this is pretty neat. Uh, quite a telltale thing. But uh, I'm going to just take a guess at what is happening and why this porous wheel was outperforming uh, the other wheel so much. If you look over here, this is the first wheel where we uh, had a... Uh, actually a very good success. You can see it's loaded on the trailing edge over here on the leading edge. It's dirty but it's really not that loaded. It's just a lot of dirt in there. So I don't know if you can see that or not. Now here's the second wheel that we we're using. That was the 60 grit and the K structure. And here's the leading edge and here's the trailing edge. If you look on this trailing edge there's no load. It's all on the leading edge and it's just opposite on this porous wheel. Now when I would put that coolant on this aluminum plate and I would paint it on there you might be able to see that in one place on uh, the video a little bit but uh, from my view where I can see it uh, you would have this puddle of this coolant and every time the wheel would come over it would be pushing it over and the leading edge would always catch in there. And I'm just taking a guess. I don't know if this is what's happening now. But I think every time that this wheel came over and I was cutting with the leading edge and cutting into that uh, pool coolant uh, with this open structure, I'm just wondering if there might be kind of a hydraulic action as the wheel spins and pushes that under there. Uh, if that is what's keeping this leading edge clean, that I don't know. I'm just kind of guessing. Uh, but it's obvious a uh, huge difference between the porous wheel and the non-porous wheel and how it loads. The load pattern on the uh, porous wheel, you can see the loading right here. I mean, it, we're getting that a little bit on the back side. It's dirty on the front, not really a whole lot of a loading yet, some. But when you come to this wheel, there's real heavy loading on the front. Very little loading on the trailing edge. And of course, we didn't take as much stock off on it. Now on this aluminum plate, I don't know uh, if you can see or not, one of the things that uh, I got all these uh, lines going through there. That those are rub marks. Uh, that's from all that loaded. That's aluminum on aluminum, and uh, that's what was generating the heat on there. And obviously, it's going to affect the size and everything too. But anyhow, uh, I was blown away by the results we had, at how well this porous wheel performed in uh, soft aluminum, and I I just thought we have to make a quick uh, update video just to show you the patterns of the loading between the two wheels. Uh, it's quite quite a interesting thing. So anyways, thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.